love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fades. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that we might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. He brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The reception of the body. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister Amy the Faberia. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, have grace and glory. Remember before you this day of our sister Eve. We thank you for giving her to us. Her family and friends know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us to mourn. Give us faith to see the death, the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth. Until by your power, we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ. Oh. Amen. Amen. Praise to the Lord.
and we pray that having opened to her the gates of latter life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please sit for the reading, first reading.
So Jesus came into the world as the way, not as a road, but as an access to the Father. Through Jesus, we have an access to God our Father. The method by which Jesus chooses to deliver us is through his resurrection. Yes, the resurrection, not at the end of time, but now, presently. For Jesus is the resurrection and the life. What is this resurrection of which John speaks? It means the arrival of the kingdom of God, the reign of God in our hearts. This is an internal matter. It is not that Jesus came back to life, rather he entered into a new life. New life. John calls eternal life or the life. John calls it eternal life and we begin to experience this life even in the present time. Now it is a foretaste of what we will experience in the life to come. The resurrection then is a means by which God through Jesus personally liberates us from our short-sighted emotions, sorrow, and resentment, and shame, and death, and fear for those who grieve the loss of their loved ones. The resurrection then is the present reality. And this takes us to the human situation in the text. In the Gospel, John tells us that Jesus and his disciples were en route, in, en route to Jerusalem. They received news that their friend Lazarus had become ill. Jesus' response to the news was frightfully disappointing. John had Jesus to indicate that illness is their means to affirm God's presence in the present time. So Jesus loitered where he was for two days. Then he finally decided to return to Judea, where Lazarus lay dying. This was to strong protest from his disciples because they feared that they would be stoned. So Jesus alerts his followers that Lazarus was asleep, from which only the power of God can awaken him. In other words, that he was dead. But they still did not understand. So Jesus promptly told them that Lazarus was there. And they started the journey with Lord Tanke back to Bethany, where Lazarus' spot was buried for four days. Jesus purposely stayed away to ensure that the Jews could not find an excuse that Jesus was not dead. For they believed that it was possible for the spirit of the dead to reunite with the cops to produce a sort of resuscitation of life up to three days after death. After four days, this would not be possible. Eventually, Jesus arrived at Lazarus' home just as he had planned. And Martha upbraided him for being late. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. Not a word for Jesus. Instead,
said, Jesus assures her that your brother will live. She believed you see him in the resurrection of the future. Yes, I will see him in the resurrection of the last day. So Jesus moved the conversation from the future to the present time. And Jesus declared, I am the resurrection and the life. Here I am, there is conquest over the power of death. And belief in me transforms the reality of death into a life that is not bounded by death. Martyrs asked, do you believe in this? Her answer is a confession of who Jesus is. Martha's confession. John is leading us to see the point that what matters in the face of death is who we believe Jesus to be. The question of death is really a question of Jesus' identity. That he was God in flesh in human form. But no is present with us through his ingrained spirit and in a tangible way to the sacrament the Eucharist of the church. Now let us return to John's dramatic story of liberation. Mother having expressed her belief in the resurrection and her faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus asked the Lazarus was there. So they took him to the grave. Jesus called him, Lazarus, come forth. And death yields its Lord. Lazarus emerges still bound in the grave clothes. Next, Jesus commands them, lose him. And set him free. So the entire thrust of John's gospel is that Jesus is liberated. He liberates us from all the powers that are present. So this takes us to our situation today in present time. John is pointing us to the fact that Jesus is still liberated to be. He rescues us, you and me, from all the powers that burden and frustrate us. There is the crime and the violence, our short sighted emotions. There is the fear of your nation living in fear because of what is happening. There is death and grief. So we are here today, we have come to the thanks for the life and the service of Mrs. Steve Beadle, one who we as church have come to believe that she has moved from life to death. For John says, you only have to believe. Once you believe, you have acquired it in this life. John was speaking about eternal life. And for John, it was not the duration of his life. As we have seen in the other gospels, they refer to everlasting life. John speaks about eternal life. John was not interested in the duration. John was more interested in the quality of his life. It is a life that death cannot touch. 
we have access to this resurrected life according to God. What we have to do is just to believe in Jesus Christ. So one has to have a relationship with Christ. So as to experience it. Through the resurrection, we can share in the victory of Christ over sin and death. This is a source of great comfort to all grief and What does God, through Jesus, expect of us on hearing this message? Today, friends, we live in a country where abuse, fear, and resentment, and grief are the Those of us who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and have established a relationship with Him, will experience this eternal life. Jesus is always present with us so as to comfort and liberate us from every power that seeks to overcome us. I pray and my hope is that we will see God's passionate love which will comfort all who are greedy, all who have been abused, those who are fearful, and use God's blessing to seek justice and peace for the Lord. This is our prayer and our wish in the name of God and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our sister was washed in holy 
baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit, give her fellowship with all your sins. She was nourished with your body, with your body and blood. Grant her a place on the table of your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our story of the death of our sister Amy. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life of hope. Yes, Father of all, we pray to you for Amy and for those who we love but see no longer. Grant them eternal rest. Let life perpetual shine upon them. May her soul, may she and all your faithful depart here through the mercy of God, rest from you. Amen. We are going to ask the family to remain standing and others be seated. Prayers from the family. I was asked. Turn back. No listen. All the family, please stand and hold hands. Let us pray. Eternal God, our loving Father, we thank you for the privilege to be in your house of worship. A place set apart to worship you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Remember your servant in the of God on to rest. We pray, oh God, for those who are holding hands. Continue, Lord, to bind them with cords that cannot be broken. For your son is the way, the truth, and the life. And what we ask of you, O God, you will grant it unto them. Let there be love. Let there be peace. Let there be joy. Let there be happiness. And as the good book reminds us, the family prays together, stay together. Take away our doubt, O Lord. You are the shepherd. You are the good shepherd, the good shepherd who his life for his sheep. Bless them, guide them, that when they leave this place of worship, there is, they can say, it was good for us to be here. Take them all down, O Lord Jesus. Wash them in your precious blood. Help them that they may concentrate on the words spoken today. This we ask <laughs> through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen, amen and amen. God bless you. We invite the rest of the congregation to join with those standing as we sing the hymn, Hark, Hark, My Soul. During the singing of this hymn, an offering will be collected for the projects of the St. Matthew's Church. Thank you. 